effectively learn how to do number talk, going to workshop and learning the basic um, way to do number talk and how important it is for the students to be able to do the mental math and be able to see different strategies of solving a problem. Salvador, can you tell me why you got your answer? First, I had a tense, which was 40 plus 30, and it equals to 70. Then okay. I added my ones, which was 5 plus 3 equals 8, and then I added 70 to 8, and I came up with 78. Very good. Good job. Excellent strategy. Just knowing that there is no one way to solve a problem, it really opens up the students to be more fluent as far as, you know, expressing their own ideas of how this is the way I solve the problem and being able to justify their answers, okay? Did anybody come up with a different strategy? Okay, Brian? I added 30 to 45 to make 75. Okay. I added 3 to 75 to make my answer 78. Okay. So you decided to take your 45 and add the 30, okay, out of 33, and then you added your one. Very good, good job. The kids are really thinking outside the box and explaining their thinking, which is very good. Jada, can you defend your answer? 500 minus 400 equals 100. Okay. 80 minus 70, 70 equals 10. Seven minus three equals four. Okay. 100 plus 10 plus four equals 114. Excellent, good job. So Jada, you decide to do it the expanded form way by taking, subtracting your hundreds, and then you subtracted your tens and your ones, and then you added all of your answers together. That was very good. I think there have definitely been some changes with embracing the frameworks and changing the way we teach mathematics. We had to trust that um, to give this a chance and to see how it would work with the kids and where they would take it. I think that the conversations have not only empowered the children with their math thinking, but they have also empowered me as a teacher to know that I can let go of some of that control. So who has an idea that they would like to share about a way that they know that you can make 10? Ava. 100 minus 90. 100 minus 90. Ava, how did you know that 100 minus 90 equals 10? Because 90 plus 10 equals 100 and minus 90 equals 10. I love that. So Ava said that she knew that 90 plus 10 equals 100. So she knew if she started with 100, and took away 90, she would have 10. Fantastic job. When we're in the middle of a number talk and I have a child who has come up with a new strategy or a um, strategy that I feel would help lead our children to the next level in their math thinking, I always like to have them explain their answer because I feel that the kids can really learn from one another. Sometimes better that they can learn from me. Levi? 19 minus nine. 19 minus nine. Levi, how did you know that 19 minus 9 equals 10? Because since there's, since the 1, that means it's one stack of 10, and the 9 means there's 9 blocks, and so if you take away the 9 blocks, it just leaves 10. I know that the frameworks have helped me to be successful as a teacher when I see the amazing growth that my students have made within a school year. It's not always all about test scores, but the fact that I have kindergartners that are performing on a second grade level in math is phenomenal. 20 minus 10, very good. <coughs> Blake, how did you know that 20 minus 10 is 10? 19 minus 9 is 10, so I added 20 minus 20 minus 10 equals 10. So what did you do to these numbers to get 20 minus 10? I added one more, one more. You added one more? No. Okay, so you added one more to 19 and you added one more to nine. So did you hear that? He looked at 19 minus nine and he added one more to 19 to make 20 and he added one more to nine to make 10 and he knew that 20 minus 10 
Good job, you guys are doing a great job. cereal out and start manipulating it on the table. I want you guys to start creating your array. Some of you may want to start differently. Think about how can I come up with an equal amount of rows and columns. I can see the light bulbs going off and I can see my students having that strong foundation, that strong math foundation and understanding and background. Um, also where they're more confident and where they can verbalize their answers and they have a better understanding themselves of what they're doing. I made an array by using six rows and four columns. My repeated addition sentence is four plus four plus four plus four plus four plus four. And I decomposed that and I made two fours go together and they made an eight. And then I did the same for these two over here. And then I had to add the eights together. And I had the eight plus eight and that got me to 16. Then I had one eight left over and 16 plus eight equals 24. My multiplication sentence is six times four equals 24. And they learn so much from each other. So I try to step back as, as hard as it is to step back, I want to step back and say, well, y'all talk about it. Because sometimes they're looking at me like, what do you want us to do? What do you want us to do? I'm like, well, you discuss it and you tell me what you want to do. You and your partner should be working together. You have to use all 24, so you have to figure out a way to use that one in your hand. Help him figure out a way to use the one in his hand talking with me and working hands-on activities, that's when I see what they know the best. Because they'll ask me, if they ask me a lot of questions, I kind of see, okay, this is a part that they're kind of fuzzy on, and this is a part that they really understand. So a lot of conversation between me and them really helps me to know who's progressing, who needs that reteach, and who needs that acceleration. My role is that of a more of a facilitator. I feel that students learn best by exploring and figuring things out for themselves. And I want to guide them in their thinking, but at the same time, I want them to realize when they've made a mistake and to figure out why they made that mistake, what they could have done differently, what needs to change for the next time. Now, if that one doesn't work, Autumn, what do you think you might do? Should you try it a different way? Oh, no, you get that amount, let's think. Because what you did, now you created this array, and you had your three rows of three, right? But you had one left over. So obviously, did that array work? No, because you can't have an odd man out. So you need to think about what's another array that I could make with those serial pieces. You have 10, think about, is there another one I can make? Which angle is greater than 90 degrees? Come show us. So this is an obtuse angle because this is more than 90 degrees because if we're, we're just flat then it'd be 180 degrees. I think it's important to know where the kids are headed so that we're not misteaching things that they're going to need to know later on. I am a big proponent of 
not telling a child that it can't be done, but possibly telling them it can't be done with fourth grade math. So just touch on it, explain why it's that way, and then move back to the lesson that we need to cover at the time. Good job, guys. I would actually give both of you points based on your explanation for putting it into the neither category or into the obtuse category, because this shape actually has an angle that we haven't covered in fourth grade. Next year, you will learn that is called a reflex angle. So it's not technically an obtuse angle because it has another name for it, but for this year, for fourth grade math and the definitions you've learned, it is greater than 90 degrees, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so even though I've been working with the new math for three years, I feel like every time I teach it, I understand it more, I get better at it, because it was new for me too. I had to go back and learn a whole new way of doing math problems. And so every time I experience it with the kids, I learn new ways that they see it. I learn new directions that they might take it, new misconceptions that they may see. So every time I work a problem with the child, I learn things as well. So do you think we figured out the categories and everything fits? Yes. I agree, good job guys. I think my students with disabilities surprise me the most because it's some stuff that I might modify and then I'm like, I didn't need to modify that. They got it within two minutes. So it's some stuff that I planned for it to be modified and they are they already know it or they they've learned it from through something else that we've done. And so I mean they surprise me every day. Okay guys, Jordan will explain her array. Jordan, explain what you did on that array. I put four circles and six rows. She put four circles in six of her rows. Now Jordan, turn your picture. Raise your hand if you can tell me what changed about Jordan's array. Jada. Um, her columns. Okay, what happened to her columns? Okay, so she has six in each column. Now she has what? She has four in each column. Beyond just the mathematics themselves, seeing the teachers work together, seeing the light come on, seeing them them, you know, work through these tasks and see, you know, well, maybe, maybe this can work. Collaboration is very important now. We find that it's more effective when we collaborate and discuss the frameworks that are at hand. Discussing them helps us to see what the students are actually going to be doing. It also allows us to see any misconceptions that the students might come across so we can kind of figure those out before actually going into the process. These kids need need other skills. They need us to have higher standards. We can't get by with what we did five and ten years ago. We got to continue to move forward. We got to continue to help our kids become critical thinkers mathematically and across the board. My job is to be smart enough to stay out of the way, to be smart enough to not stop the momentum, work with the teachers, support them, do it hands-on, make it fun, make it engaging, and then that, that relevant learning will explode in the classroom and students will be much better because we are taking the time to put them first. I think if I could tell teachers one thing with regard to the mathematics frameworks is that they need to try them. They need to implement them in their classroom and go all in and trust that the growth they are going to see in their students, the progress their students are going to make, and the confidence that their students are going to have with regard to mathematics will make it all worthwhile. I think the most difficult thing for parents with the shift in math is feeling like they don't know how to help their kids when the kids are struggling or bring home new math. It's so different from the way the generations before learned it that the parents feel like they don't know where to start with helping them. And so many times the parents just want to jump in and say, oh, well, I have an easier way, do it this way. But that doesn't really help the child understand what they're supposed to be learning. It just teaches them 
a set of steps to do. It's important to be open with parents and be upfront and to let them know what you're doing in your classroom and involve them in the conversation. Allow them to experience some of the, the framework task um, just as the children will. I often put the three act task on my website just so that the parents can go through the task themselves and to see what it's all about. I did a little workshop with the parents and showing them some of the strategies that we've used in class and also gave them a little um, handout with those strategies. I also gave them a problem in the classroom for them to actually solve using the strategies and they were very appreciative um, for that bit of information because they said now they're able to help their child at home with math homework. Honestly, I think we need to help educate the parents and so that they can help with the kids. I know for us in our school, we try and set up our websites so that the parents have a place to go for resources so that they can look through the way the child is supposed to do it, not just teach them the way they learned it years ago. And I know I've had pl numerous parents tell me that that helps, just having some place to go as a resource. When I can walk into a classroom and I hear kids arguing with each other about math and justifying as to how did I get my answer in math, and they are very passionate about their justifications, I know that it works because you never see kids arguing about math. <laughs>